first of all, I would like to say how to everyone from Hong Kong. Uh, how are you? So uh, I would like to thank uh, KAUST for inviting me to deliver this lecture. I'm very happy to do this. Uh, today, I'm going to tell you about the concept of en uh, ecological engineering in sort eco engineering. Uh, and how this technology can enhance marine biodiversity and also ecosystem services. So um, to address this uh, uh, winter enhancement program uh, with a focus on resilience. So as we all know that uh, global warming leading to the sea level rise, it has been predicted that by 20, uh, 200, sorry, 2150, then the sea level going to increase by 1.9 to 5 meter. So because of the sea level rise, uh, we're going to see more and more shoreline hardening, uh, try to use a concrete structure to protect the shoreline from wave action, flooding, and land erosion. So this is uh, our human society trying to tackle this sea level rise issue. However, if we do more such kind of hardening, that will really destroy the natural habitat. That will lead to a uh, reduction of the biodiversity and also marine natural resources. So in this talk, I will try to introduce to you the eco-engineering can do both, protect the shoreline at the same time uh, to promote marine biodiversity and also let the ecosystem uh, to regain the, those uh, uh, natural ecosystem surfaces for human. So in this talk, I'm going to have a, a three different parts. First, I will talk about the concept of eco-engineering of seawalls. And then uh, I will tell you, uh, introduce to you some examples from Hong Kong and also from overseas. And then finally, I will talk about the drivers and the future development of eco-engineering of solar lines. So before my talk, I'm going to ask you an interesting question. So if you were given this small apartment here, and then you are only allowed to bring three items of furniture or electric applicants, so what will you bring? So I give you some time to think about this. Will you bring a washing machine, will you bring a bed, and so forth. Okay, what will you bring? Okay, now, I, I did a survey before. Most people will bring these three items, including a bed for sleeping, and then an air conditioner for uh, making the temperature more comfortable. And finally, they want a refrigerator uh, for providing the food and drinks. So please remember these three items very essential for us. This also applies to the natural environment. So now let us start the first part of my talk about the theory behind uh, eco-engineering. So as we all know, the seawall is very important to protect the shoreline from wave action, flooding, and erosion. There are two typical types of seawalls around the world. The first one is a vertical one. It is for boat parking or boat mooring, uh, so that the boat can get closer to the shoreline. And then the other one is a sloping seawall. Uh, it's for the open area without uh, the vessel activities. So as you can see from these two pictures, you can see that not many marine life are around, mainly barnacles, oysters. Uh, so then the, you may ask why, okay? So um, we did an investigation before our colleagues did this. Then we compared the natural shoreline against the vertical seawall within our famous Victoria Harbor in Hong Kong. So um, the green one are the lateral one, the red one are the artificial seawall. What the study found, very interesting. Uh, let's look at this small diagram first. 
for the artificial sea wall, you see the species similarity very high. That means whenever you go to any sea wall, you will find the same community. They are identical, almost 75%. However, uh, if you look at the similarity in Waukee Shore, uh, the species communication com community are very different. So you can imagine you go to a different Waukee Shore, you will find the structure are very different because uh, it go through the lateral erosion process. Some will have a walk pool, some with a different facing of the rock, different size of rock, then they will create different habitat for different species. Another important finding is that look at these uh, species here. They are invasive species. That means long local species. Uh, they invade the uh, native environment. Then you will see most of them only can be found in the sea walls. This is partly due to the fact that uh, in natural environment, uh, more predators will go there to feed, and then they can remove these kind of invasive species. However, the predator doesn't like those artificial shoreline. Uh, th these are the major differences. Then in terms of the species lumber, diversity of species, also see the differences uh, very clear between artificial and natural shoreline. And then in the high shore, the black bar, you can see the differences and also apply to the mid shore. So that means artificial shoreline is not good for marine biodiversity. Then the reason why. So let's take a look of this thermal image uh, we took on the vertical seawall. The temperature during low time midday, then the temperature can rise above 50 degrees Celsius. In the same shore, shoreline, we find uh, those uh, lateral walk key shore. Then you can see the temperature variability very high in the lateral shore. Because there are indentation and different facing of the rock, then you can see the temperature differences could be like a 15 degrees Celsius lower uh, than those hottest place. Take this example in here, uh, you can see in the vertical part of the lateral rock here, many scars of dead barnacle body. The white uh, circle are the dead body of the barnacle because they cannot have the shading and no water retention, they were uh, uh, desiccated and died at the end. But at the same time, same area with this horizontal layer can trap water. The mussels, barnacles, other marine lives are very happy because the temperature is much lower, they can survive. So we learn from the lateral environment that we have to have a system to provide shading and then water holding and also different indentation crevices uh, provide refuge for the marine life to survive. Another interesting part and important part is that when you go to the walkie shore with your boyfriend, girlfriend watching the beautiful sea fun, and then uh, you will step on this rock you will see the color of the rock are very different. Some are brown in color, some are in green color, some even in dark color. So if you scratch the surface and then examine them under microscope, you will find them they are actually a microscope, microscopic algae and also those are cyanobacteria, we call it blue green algae. They are the important food for the herbivores. For example, here, we have the chitin, limpet, and the periwinkle. They all fit on this biofilm uh, with those um, microscopic algae uh, biofilm. Then this chitin just walk through and eat the surface biofilm. Whenever it eats the surface, it clean up the surface. Then those the green ones uh, are the food for them. Once you have this biofilm, then uh, the herbivore is very happy and then we'll attract the predator, like this dog well, they will feed on them and other predator will come into place like a crabs or fish. So to maintain a healthy ecosystem, we need to have the biofilm to play a part. How can we achieve this in eco-engineering? Let me show you the diagram uh, animation. First, the seawall have to retain the nutrients like carbohydrate, proteins, and then attract the bacteria and also the microscopic algae to go on this surface. And then later on, attract the swim and also large 
organism come into play uh, on the system. Uh, that also include this important grazer to fit on the bow frame. So then we can build a beautiful food chain uh, through this engineering technology. Let's take an example here. So as you can see, this engineering surface with a warp surface, it is very good for marine life, such as this uh, uh, cyanobacteria and the seaweed. Uh, the particles, we really like this groove uh, area, they would like to settle on it. On the contrary, you can see this, this uh, very smooth surface, low marine life, okay? So that means we have to learn from the lecture system, we need a rough surface to build a bow frame. As I said before, during the low tide, the ecosystem is suffering from the physical stresses like desiccation and high temperature. In that case, we need to provide shading and water retention as well as some crevices as for them to hide from the sun. And then when the tide comes in, uh, during the high tide, uh, there will be biological competition and also high predation pressure. Then the small organisms need to find refuge to hide themselves away from the predators. So to do the eco-engineering, we have to consider both to against the physical stress and also the biological uh, stress at the same time. So how we can do it? Currently, most seawall made of concrete uh, or granite walk, then uh, it suffer from many problems. First, the surface is far too smooth. It's not good for forming the bow frame. And then the second thing is, the concrete cement has a high pH value, around 12 to 13. It's an alkali. In contrast to the sea level pH, which is only eight, okay? So many marine organisms will not feel comfortable to settle on those surfaces uh, made of concrete. And why they use high alkalinity in this uh, concrete structure? Because very often they use V-bar, the, the steel bar as a reinforcement structure. To protect the metals from corrosion, they have to use high uh, pH value. So all in all, this system is not good for uh, having the bow film, okay? So to rectify the problem, first, we have to modify the surface, make it very rough, okay? At the same time, we lower the surface pH down to 8.5 by one, uh, using, using different mix of, of the material or using carbonization uh, by uh, putting the material inside a, a carbonated chamber. And then after doing this, uh, we need to change the reinforcement from metal bar to glass fiber, okay? Because the pH is too low now, we'll have corrosion problems. So we have to replace the metals with this uh, glass fiber. After doing all this, then we have to design the houses for the marine organism. Uh, this including provide the shading, water retention and refuge for the marine organism. For example, this tower uh, have these uh, ridges to provide shading and also uh, the hiding places and water retention in those uh, surface. So in this thermal imaging, you can see the, the temperature reduction can achieve by 15 degrees Celsius. Uh, this is a very good for the marine organism. As you remember, I asked you the early question that uh, what kind of furnitures and electric applicants you will bring to this small apartment. And uh, the bed and air conditioner uh, refrigerator. It's the same to apply this concept to make, a houses, uh, make houses for the marine life. So they need a hiding place to sleep. And then they also need a very nice temperature to survive. They also require the food to eat, like the biofilm, and then create a nice food chain for them. So these are major concepts when we rebuild our conventional seawall into livable seawall for the marine life. Um, if you do well, you will see many marine life will come back to our shoreline, okay? However, we need to manage our expectation. Uh, this is not magic bullet. 
uh, for uh, return the uh, concrete seawall into the lateral environment. Uh, this very often is unachievable from this curve, seawall, uh, artificial seawall, all the way like a uh, lateral environment. The eco engineering can help to improve the situation, but in most cases, we cannot achieve what we've seen from the lateral rocky shore. So um, another important message here is that when we have more uh, species of organisms living in the environment, they will provide different surfaces, provide us the seafood. At the same time, like this, a bio, like the mussels and also uh, the oyster, they can filter the water, clean up the water by removing the microscopic algae from water column. At the same time, remove the organic matters as well. Let me show this uh, very simple experiment we did. So we put the microalgae in the tank. This one is the control in the middle one. And then we have the green mussel here and also the pearl oyster here. Then uh, just around 30 minutes, then they can make the water just clean, very nice, nicely clean. After one hour, then you will see, you can see through the water. So this provides you the evidence that imagine if we have a healthy shoreline with lots of this kind of bio, they can actually clean up the water and then make the water more suitable for sensitive species like corals to come back. So uh, this is example how important to enhance marine biodiversity to provide more ecosystem services to us. So because such a kind of a proven technology uh, uh, with the scientific evidence uh, to tell us that uh, this technology will work well. So in the last 10 years, uh, many different countries are uh, starting to adopt these new technologies uh, to build their seawall. For example, this is uh, uh, in the UK, and then uh, they're using this bow block, and also this one from Seattle Seawall Project. Later on, I will tell you more about this. Uh, this is a Lemon Bay from Florida. Uh, this small recent project in Sydney Harbour called Living Seawall Project. Uh, they provide very diverse uh, habitat to encourage more different species uh, to come back. So we have a well-established theory in e ecology that the biodiversity actually driven by the habitat diversity. So if you have a, a very homogeneous environment, then you will have a handful of species live in this environment. If you modify it to be more complex, you will encourage at the uh, more species will stay there. Then if you make it even more complex, you will find even higher biodiversity in the system. Another important message is that uh, then in our current situation around the world, uh, we have more destruction to our lateral shoreline, just like this graph on the x-axis. We have more and more destruction damage to the lateral shoreline, then we can see the decline of the species and then become the species very similar homogenized at the end. So by providing the eco-engineering uh, uh, technology, then we try to push this curve backward, we try to push it back. So try to uh, rebuild the ecosystem by providing uh, more different diverse habitats that will welcome uh, and also harbor more different species. So if we do it correctly, then you're going to see that uh, the eco-engineered shoreline or in sort we call eco shoreline can offer uh, multiple functions. First, it can protect the shoreline as a conventional seawall. At the same time, it can enhance the ecological performance, including enhancement of biodiversity, reduction of biological invasion, increase the connectivity between lateral shores, okay? Uh, because now the middle uh, artificial shore become the bridges uh, to connect uh, the species and then allow better gene flow. Uh, at the same time, it will provide 
uh, a lot of different ecosystem surfaces like water purification I just mentioned, and also primary production by the algae and seaweed, and also increasing the fishery resources. Uh, you can also fix carbon. If we have in a large enough area, we can plant some mangoes or salt marshes, they can actually help us to do the carbon neutrality. And, and if we involve the architect uh, to help with the landscape, then in actual fact, we can create this eco shoreline uh, to be a lov lovely environment for people to enjoy the waterfront. And also we can create educational uh, opportunities for children. So for example, this one very successful project in Sydney uh, in the Barangaroo Reserve. Then in this um, uh, reserve, they build the soil line with this uh, lecture sandstone. Uh, then uh, they went through millions here of erosion. You can see they have holes, crevices, and different surface. You can see the staircase here, two different color. Those in green and dark color are the biofilm, okay? Uh, this now is in a low tide situation. You can see the, these are uh, a fantastic environment for different marine life. So during the low tide, the children can get down to the shore to learn about the marine organisms uh, in their harbor. And then uh, during high time or normal day, people can sit there and enjoy this water fun. So all you know, this is a very, very nice technology. Uh, we can provide protection ecological enhancement and people's enjoyment. So there are three different kinds of uh, design. One is hard engineering, just using this uh, hard engineering technology. Then uh, we also have another extreme, only using natural materials like uh, mango plantation, salt marsh plantation with oyster shells. Then we have uh, something hybridized uh, between using uh, concrete, uh, technology plus the uh, salt marsh or mango plantation with a uh, concrete seawall. So I hope now you have the basic understanding of this uh, concept of uh, eco engineering. So now I will give you some real example how this eco engineering works in real life situation. Um, so uh, in this uh, experiment or the trial, uh, we asked two questions. Can habitat complexity introduced by eco engineering enhance marine biodiversity on seawalls? And second question we asked can we lower the temperature of seawalls using eco engineering? Okay, so we, we bring back the concept, we make the habitat more complex to see more uh, different species to combine. So in this experiment, we have uh, six different treatment. This effect tau means uh, no, no treatment as a control. And then we have the tau with uh, 2.5 cm widgets and also 5 cm widgets. Another group, same, but this time we stick some uh, rock oyster, the native oyster on top of these three different types then to increase the complexity. So we tried this technology or this testing uh, in two different seawalls in Hong Kong. So uh, first, what we found, um, the increase of this richest height in the uh, eco tower, uh, we can see the kind of temperatures. That means the tower uh, structure can actually reduce the temperature, make the system more benign, more comfortable to the marine life. Maximum reduction is by two degrees Celsius. That results are very positive. Uh, we measure the temperature using two techniques. One is a thermal imaging. The other one is called I button, tiny button. It will uh, capture temperature every 10 minutes for us. And then we retrieve them uh, on monthly basis. So, when we look at uh, the marine life on the eco tower, wow, just eye opening because we can see the species, we won't see them in a normal sea, sea wall like these crabs and also this biwaf. So the results are really encouraging. So when we look at the data, number of species uh, we found, uh, 
from those just fat 2.5 widgets, 5 uh, cm widgets, and those stick with the oyster uh, in green bar. You can see the enhancement following the complexity nicely. So then our prediction is correct. If we increase the complexity, more different species will come back. And then how about those that stick with oyster? We found uh, in terms of uh, coverage of species, we found actually more baby oyster come back to the system. This is a very cheap technology by doing simply stick the oyster shell or oyster on the seawall, you will see improvement already in terms of the biodiversity. So uh, in, in summary, from this study, uh, we, we confirmed that habitat capacity uh, introduced by eco-engineering can increase marine biodiversity on seawalls. Then the increment is a very encouraging uh, 51% of species diversity, and also almost four times increase in the abundance of marine organisms. So eco tower seated with uh, the oyster perform even better. And, and also we proved that the eco tower can lower temperature, make the environment more suitable for the marine life. Uh, we are really pleased that our study, our publication actually picked up by European Commission they use it to inform their policy making for future development of seawall. So this is a, a very encouraging result, a very positive. So our study is a part of the bigger project. It's called World Harbor Project, involving 14 cities around the world. So then uh, they carry out the same experiment. The results are very similar. Then this one is uh, the species which less, if above zero, that means uh, there is an increase of uh, species in the system. This is a total, the algae uh, not very clear, but we can see uh, the invertebrate uh, mobile one and set cell one, that means they not move, they stick on, on the, uh, the tower. So this is a, a lack comparison between uh, the control and the uh, eco tower. So as you can see, uh, the performance uh, is even better in the lower shore, okay? Because they have less uh, problem with the physical stress, like hot temperature. So when we look at the abundance, uh, very positive result can be seen uh, from the 14 country, uh, 14 cities. Um, as you can see, uh, uh, we compare also uh, the temperate region and tropical region, we find some differences. In the tropical region, we, we find uh, with the eco tower, we can see the recovery of the total number of species and also more mobile uh, mollusk species coming back, like the snail, limpet, and so forth. And then on the contrary, in the cooler region, uh, we will find We have some technical issues. Uh, we're trying to re-establish connection, so just give us a moment. Sorry.